Recording in progress.
in Texas today. Um, this afternoon's program is a hybrid type program um, because of the wonderful benefits of technology. We are able to view and participate in uh, the service that has been held there in the Northwest Seventh-day Adventist Church in, in Texan, Texas, while we also celebrate here in Antigua and Barbuda at the St. John Seventh-day Adventist Church where Claudette was a member. Um, this afternoon, as indicated, the service will be hybrid. Your program is uh, pretty clear and the program should be followed um, as it is listed here. We are awaiting the uh, start of the service from Texas. They have the preliminary and opening items and here in Antigua we have about four items that we will participate in. Again, we are um, on behalf of the St. John Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Kendall Doyle and the board members, of course, we extend deepest condolences to the family, um, to her children, uh, Diana and Alvin Jr. And, and Claudia. We also extend deepest condolences to the grandchildren and other members of the family, including Leland, who is here, um, Sister Ruth and the other brothers, siblings, uh, who are uh, watching, viewing also. We also want to take the opportunity to extend condolences on behalf of the South Leewood Conference, President Dr. Carson Green and uh, the Executive Secretary, Pastor Wayne Knowles, and also uh, the Treasurer, Sister Krista Moore. Today, we have members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here who also would have interacted um, very often with Sister Claudette uh, who was a very integral part of the congregation here, loved by all, and also very involved in the services of the church uh, during her tenure. We also take the opportunity to welcome her co-workers from the Medical Benefits Scheme. I believe they will participate a little later. I can always remember Sister Claudette in that uh, green pathfinder that was always parked on Tanner Street, if I remember correctly. Um, very, very, very good friend. So this afternoon, as we celebrate her life, we trust that God will just bless us, um, that he will be our source of comfort and a reminder that life is fleeting, that we ought always to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So ere he comes or calls, we can all be ready to go home with him. So as I mentioned before, we will await the official start from the... Northwest Seventh-day Adventist Church in Texas. But in the meantime, I'll just invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Father, we come this afternoon to celebrate the life of a mother, a friend, a co-worker, grandmother, a sister, Lord, a loved one, one whom we loved and cherish very much, a friend to so many. Today, Lord, we ask that your divine presence will abide with us here. May the moments and the memories be ones that would bring us hope and comfort. And Lord, help each of us by your grace to make our calling and election sure. We pray that this afternoon's service will indeed be a source of comfort to the entire family, both here and in the United States and further afield. And for those who are viewing uh, via YouTube, we pray, God, that as they also share in this moment, that they will be blessed and also moved, knowing that life on earth may be fleeting, but we serve a God who has promised that he will come again. Bless us to this end, we pray, and may this afternoon service be a blessing to all. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we'll await the official start.
guys sound good. Uh, let's turn to hymn number 529. 529, Anders Wings. that one? You can do some more. <laughs> Number 208. I haven't sang this one in years, but I guess I might need to do it today. There'll be no dark valley when Jesus comes. I need help on this one. There'll be no when Jesus comes, there'll be no other valley when Jesus comes, there'll be no dark valley when Jesus comes to gather his love ones home, to gather his love ones home. Tomorrow when Jesus comes to 
Sweet by and by. Four two eight. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see the fire for the fall. Sing on the beautiful shore. The melodious song of the blessed, and the spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessings of friends in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on the beautiful shore. His love and the blessings that hallow it is in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet. to lose my voice, but I have one more song to do, if you don't mind. I need some basses and some tenors and some altos. If you do it, I need to hear you. Hymn number 440, How Cheering is the Christian Hope. So I can hear you? All right, here we go. Oh. 
Our first scripture reading will be taken from Job 19.25 in the King James Version. Why now that my redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Our second scripture will be taken from Revelation 21, 1-5 in the King James Version. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing into the doing of his holy word. Amen. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we have been reunited at uh, Houston Northwest Southern Adventist Church to celebrate the life of Claudette P. Martin, who was born on a beautiful island of Antigua and Barbuda, to Alfred and uh, Alexandrina Powell on the 25th day of June in the year 1960. Claudette, along with her parents and her five siblings, George, William, Godfrey, Ruth, and Leland, lived in modest accommodations on Edward Street in the central part of the island known as Otters. Claudette attended Antigua Girls High School. She was enormously proud of this, as it was one of the top schools on the island. After completing her formal education, she got her only job at the Medical Benefits Scheme, where she worked over 40 years until she retired. Claudette was a very jovial person. If you saw her go eat, you know she was having a good time. <laughs> she enjoyed creating unique meals, sewing clothes, decorating her home, and tending to a countless number of plants. Those who got the opportunity to experience collaborating with my mom had a resource to help them with anything. In my family, no one got, no one got called their first name, unless your middle name was not better, or your nickname never caught on. In mommy's case, she was known to many as Carmen. At the age of 38, my mom developed heart failure, which required her to have her first open heart surgery, with years of recovery ahead of her, according to the doctors. Within a year, she was back on her feet, tending to her family. Mommy was stubborn, but and took extraordinary pride in everything that she did. According to her, if you're gonna do something and you're not gonna do it at the best of your ability, you would say, what's the point? One big chops. <laughs> she would never leave the house if it was unorganized. So we were late a lot, everywhere, including her going to work. Mommy loved her family. We never asked for much but she made sure that every birthday and annual holiday was filled with a full change of color in the house, leaving no room untouched, a dining room that was always ready to host a dinner for 10 people with many snacks and treats. My most fun memory was going to sleep Christmas Eve night with no decorations or tree up, and waking up Christmas Day, seeing a tree, presents, and all the necessary decorations to accompany the season. My mom was the glue that held many of our relationships together. She remembered everyone's birthday as if it was her own. Mommy told you to call someone's relative to wish them happy birthday. No matter the occasion, whether she was hurting or not, you could count on her to make various wonderful fruit juices, bread pudding, and one of a kind fruit cake. At any event or holiday, to be made special. Carmen leaves behind her three kids, Diana, Claudia, and myself, four grandkids, Mikel, Takwa, Carlina, Tahara, and many other family and friends who would have given anything to have one more day with her. Even though her smile is gone forever, and we can't hold her hand anymore, we have many memories of her because we loved her so much. Her memory is our keepsake, with which we will never part. God will keep her in his keeping, and we'll keep in our hearts. Love you, Mom, from all of us.
with rain Emotions run together in a flood of doubt and pain We've prayed as best we can Now we must leave it in his hand Yet I know when mine eyes fail to see He is able And even though it seems impossible to me Yes, he's able, but if he chooses not to move in the way that I prayed he would, I'm confident he's working all together for my good, and I will stand behind his word, for he is a haunt you night and day how can God allow your heart to be torn this way does he listen when you call or is he even there at all yet I know when my eyes fail to see, he is able. And even though it seems impossible to me, he is able. God is able. But if he chooses not to move In the way that I prayed he would I'm confident he's working All together for my good And I will stand Behind his word For he is a Dawning and evaporates away. I'll stand to face another day, and I'll stand behind his word for he. Hi, my name is Dan Limerick, and um, we grew up at a time where friendship matters, and it's a testament that you are here in Houston, and those of you in Antigua are here because friendship continues to matter. 
I'm here because Claudette asked me to be here. I'll get to that in a while. There's often this saying where people will say, Claudette is in a better place. Well, let me dispel that. Claudette would have loved to be here among us, hearing those beautiful songs we sing and hearing all the tributes. But the reality is she's not here with us. But we're here to celebrate her life and the blessings she brought to each one of us. Claudette, to many of us, was looking forward to retirement. We talked about it all the time. She said, boy, Dan, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. She wanted to travel and spend time with her children and grandchildren. She had been working ever since she left high school, as AJ had pointed out, and wanted to spend her retirement years traveling, seeing the world, spending time with her children and grandchildren. She talked about taking a trip back to California where she had spent some time before. But she said, this time I'm not going with Miss Hesse. Some Claudette would have loved to be here. I was going through my WhatsApp message from Claudette and looking at all her missed calls. Yes, there were many missed calls. Now, please, before you get at me for not answering, I must explain something. When Claudette calls you, you got to have time. you got to have time. And Claudette was of the impression that whatever time it is there, it is the same time all over the world. And she's now realizing that I'm in California, which is three hours different. She would, when Claudette would call, you say, you need to make sure you have time to talk, because Claudette will talk and talk. Now, when I get time to talk to Claudette, she'll begin by saying, mm-hmm, when days are dark, friends are few. I would say, Claudette, it's not like that, Jack. And she would repeat, when days are dark, I know better not to argue with Claudette. Claudette will then proceed to tell me everything I missed from the last time we spoke to now. She would talk about church, her class luncheon, her work, and yes, her co-workers, her children, and everything that crossed her mind. She would often interject by saying, listen now, just listen. This often took her to another story. Claudette was a classy woman. I remember going back home to Antigua after a long absence and seeing Claudette in church. After church, I commended on her lovely dress. She said, hey, hey. So, no, actually, I commented on her lovely dress. She said, hey, hey, let me make this. I said, come on, Claudette. And over time, I've been able to see the lovely dresses that she has made for herself, her family members, and friends. Her, small, her home was small and modest, but neat and organized. As AJ pointed out, she had a color scheme for various events, and her curtains match her couch cushion, and it also matches her dining table. Everything was so organized. Carl, Claudette always had a meal to share. Sometimes it was a pudding, a cake, or a small meal. She always had a treat. And I remember before I returned to the U.S., she always had at least two different jams for me to take back. I remember when my mom passed, she called me on WhatsApp and said, if I need anything to cook then, just let me know. And for our Sabbath lunch, she prepared a big pot of rice and peas, and it was seasoned well. I couldn't go on about Claudette, but I'm here to give a tribute. You see, Claudette had asked me on more than one occasion to write a tribute when she passed. At the time, it seems weird. I had written a tribute to a friend who had passed away and asked me to be read, asked me to be read at church. A day later, Claudette called me all excited. Boy, Dan, that tribute you wrote for David Romeo, I love it bad, bad. When we did, you write a tribute just like that. I said, Claudette, I kind of write your tribute like that because your tribute will be different. He said, all right, but make sure you write one. 
um, about a year or so ago, a dear friend of hers passed, Silvanita, and she called me to inform me of her passing. Her next words were, make sure you write a tribute to Sylvie, which I did. I have been praying and hoping that Claudette would have made it through her recent surgery. Every message I got from her kids offered a glimmer of hope. Her last message to me was on May the 2nd, 2002. She told me that the surgeons came in today and that her surgery would be the next day and that they will take her down at 6 a.m. I told her that I'd be praying for her. So Claude had asked me to write a tribute, so here's my tribute. I am grateful and blessed to have been Claude Martin Powell friend in life and will continue to be her friend in debt, honoring all that I do. I'm thankful for the times we spent in each other's company, the stories we shared and the laughters we had. Even though I had left Antigua over 40 years, Claudette and I will connect first via Magic Jack and later by WhatsApp, and she would bring me the news and views of the day. Claudette's life was simple, not too extravagant, but classy. She valued hard work. One year, I was coming home, and she asked that I brought her a variety of nuts and prunes. I asked why she needed so many prunes, and she said she needed it for her cakes. I told her I never heard of prune being in cake. She said in her black cake, she adds prunes. Well, to my delight, the cake bang good, as we would say. She went on to say that she would often bake and sell cakes to make ends meet. She also said she also worked at her brother's restaurant on Sundays. I know because I had met her there. Claudette worked tirelessly for her children and her family. She had a heart full of compassion. To her children and grandchildren, to her brothers and sisters. Mothers play an integral part in each of our lives. They mold and nurture us in a way no one else can. They love us unconditionally. No, much how, no matter how much we have grown or where life has taken us, the mothers, you will always be their child or children. As each one of us sit here, we cannot help but reflect on a moment in time, or many times for that matter, where Claudette made you a meal that hit the spot, or said a word of comfort, or made you laugh. Some of you might be thinking of a deed that she had done that had positively, has positively impacted your life. We have come together today as a people of faith to celebrate and honor the life and legacy of a woman who has lived a life of service. Service to her community, service to her work, service to her family, service to her church family, and service to her children. Be comforted. Be comforted in knowing that this earthly loss is truly heaven's gain. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica Powell, and today I'll be reading a tribute on behalf of my dad, George Powell, to Sister Claudette Martin. Claudette Powell was one of six children for my parents, Alfred and Virginia Powell. I am the first. Being close in age and being the first of two children in the family, we formed a close bond early in our lives. She was always a very jovial person and loved me unconditionally. She always wanted to make sure that I had anything that I wanted. She would go out of her way to make sure that I was a very happy person. My sister was a very creative and skillful person, and at the age of 12 was sewing her own school uniforms and also making clothes for other family members and friends. 
She was also a lover of good music and entertainment and learned to play the piano. She was also a very sensitive and would seemingly feel the pain of others because she was easy to cry when others were hurt. Carter was like the second mother of our family and helped care for all her siblings. My surviving brother and sister can attest to this. And this is why we remained a tightly knit group, even in adulthood, and in spite of having our own individual families. The passing of my beloved sister has left a void which cannot be filled, and I will miss her. But I am not comforted by the knowledge that she is in a better place and has gone to be with the Lord. <laughs> She has been updating our dad with the happenings in the family, and I hope to meet her again on this. I hope to meet her again one day in heaven. This thing, I know it said quartet, and you see five people up here. So it's four, it's a quintet. But let me do something. Let me introduce these, these young men that are here. For those of you who may not know, um, on my far right is Dayton Samuel, Don Samuel. Next to him is Joseph Aaron, Pastor Joseph Aaron, the illustrious Alvin Martin, Philip Henry and Dan Limerick. Testing. OK, got you. I turn them on. Testing. Testing. Joseph. Test, test. So the roll on my tempest I am a people for I know why leave all the winds may blow I've an anchor safe and sure that can never more endure and it holds my Bye. 
Hello, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Feel no guilt in laughter. She knows how much you care. Feel no sorrow in a smile that she's not here to share. You cannot grieve forever. She would not want you to. She'd hope that you carry on the way you always do. So talk about the good times and the ways you showed you cared, the days you spent together, all the happiness you shared. Let memories surround you. A word someone may say will suddenly recapture a time, an hour, a day. That brings her back so clearly as though she were still here and fills you with the feelings that she is always near. For if you keep these moments, you will never be apart, and she will live forever locked safely within your heart. Amen. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. This song is for my friend, my daughter, and my sister.
Good afternoon, everyone. Claudette Powell Martin was a fun-loving, dedicated woman and colleague. We who worked with her know this truth. She was generous and kind. She was hardworking, dedicated, and resilient. Mrs. Martin joined the Medical Benefit Scheme on the 23rd of July, 1979, until the time of her retirement on 26th of June, 2020. Majority of her years were spent as a member of the Benefits Department, later renamed the Claims Payable Department. In the latter years prior to her retirement, Claudette experienced major challenges as a result of her illness. However, she remained faithful to the organization and its beneficiaries and persevered to maintain, maintain her attendance at work. We recall on many occasions she would be very, very late for work, but she showed up and always ensured that her quota of work was completed, even if it took her into the evening hours. That was real commitment. Undoubtedly, she was successful in executing her duties as a claims processor. Our records reveal that within the last 10 years, Claudette processed in excess of 23,000 claims, amounting to in excess of $7 million in refunds to our beneficiaries. She had the right attitude to get the job done. She had a great relationship with her fellow team members. The unit had been together for a long time, and so there was a common understanding between the, th the team. Claudette was quite knowledgeable, but still very respectful of authority and the system in place. Claudette Paul Martin was a character. She was very jovial, as said before. She loved to be honest, telling jokes and sharing humor. She was not afraid to laugh even to laugh at herself. And when she was confident in her point, she held on to that point. She was generous, especially to her closest co-workers. She would be the transporter for their social outings. Also, she would be right there in the middle when it came to decorating and dressing up for independence or Christmas. She was a seamstress, designer, and patriot. She was also cook and baker. This is the Claudette we knew and appreciated outside of just doing the work. Claudette, C-L-A-U-D-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. C is for caring. She was a caring coworker who was always concerned with completing her part of the work and contributing to the team. She was like a friend, also a sister, and even a mother to some. L. L is for lady. Claudette was a classy lady who knew how to dress. She was a designer and a Fashionista. A is for Antiguan. She was a patriot. Come Independence time, she was always well dressed in her national colors, from her head wrap to her shoes. U, U is for unique. There was no one like Claudette. She brought an aura to the room when she entered. And even though she would have a serious face sometimes, when she broke out to laughter, you know it was a different thing. T is for thorough. She was very thorough and diligent doing her work. She took more time than others sometimes, but she was careful to get the job done and get the job done correctly. T again is for talented. Claudette was a talented performer to us within the department especially. 
where she was a comedian. And she would tell countless jokes. And she would also do impressions using an African accent. And these impressions were indeed priceless. E, finally, for energetic. Yes, though limited, she was full of life. She was going to make it to that staff dinner or that day pass. She was going to make it to Sister Bridges' women's group concert. She was going to be there with Colette and Maribain. Claudette was committed also to the Medical Benefit Scheme Social Club. She played her part with cooking and supporting fundraising efforts. She had even been on at least two hikes. Yes, she was a hiker as well. One of these hikes was to the seasonal Christian Valley waterfall, where when a lot of rain comes in Antigua, we get flood, flood rains, then we have a, a waterfall going on in the Jennings area. And she made it a good way. Her feet, nor spirit, nor faith, nor love failed her. Claudette Paul Martin was all about family. She would always express her love for her bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. Of course, this was AJ, Claudia, and Diana, her three children. She would always express all, as well love for her brothers, sister, mother, and grandchildren. She would give updates regarding how they were doing. She would also express her love for her church and her God. All of us who worked closely with her knew she loved and cared for us. She was a very generous soul. Those most intimate to her could tell of her generosity. This from a lady who was committed to tithing. It was indeed great to see her make it to her retirement. She had a good heart. It loved so much and lasted long. On behalf of the medical benefits, board management staff, and especially the claims payable department, we wish the family, friends, and loved ones of Claudette Paul Martin our sincerest condolences. Moreover, we pray her soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbye. Time won't matter anymore. And I'm longing for you.
also is part of the worship club, song service. She gathered much strength and comfort from the next day, hospital treatment. She will be missed and remembered for her unique bold signature and striking song. Let us now listen to her name. Goddess for the good fight. She has blessed us splendidly. We know that this is not the end of the beginning. All comfort and Well, as we seek to continue to eulogize our sister Claudette, the intention was that the uh, sermon would have come from Texas. However, as you are aware from time to time, uh, we have technical difficulties. And uh, the family being aware of this possibility did ask me to uh, stand by. And so this afternoon I will share a brief uh, thought with us as we continue to eulogize our dear friend, uh, loved one, sister, and uh, just pray that God will direct and bless us as we hear from God's word. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Eternal Father, God of love, we are thankful for the time that you've shared, Sister Claudette, with us. Lord, we understand that in moments like these, we need a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We also recognize, Lord, that you are still our shelter in the time of storm, and you indeed are our rock in a weary land. Today we present the entire family to you and ask you, God, just to be with them as they manage these moments. And as I share from your word now, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted by you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. The truth is that life often comes with ups and downs. The reality also is that the God that we serve is God not only of the mountain, but he's also God of the valley. He's a God in the good times, but he's also God in the bad times. Would you agree with me, church? And in this moment, this afternoon, there is a passage of scripture that we have used over the years to bring support and encouragement, a passage of scripture that we would often go to when we are feeling low, when we are feeling down. And it is that familiar passage that we find in Psalm 23, the psalmist David, in his challenging moment, he utilize these expressions to speak from his heart. And you know it very well. The Bible declares, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, the word of God declares, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In these first four verses, David introduces the Lord, the Alpha, the Omega, the Lord, the begotten of the Father, the Lord, the door of the sheepfold, the Lord, the Lamb of God, the Lord as master, the Lord as the rod, the Lord as the way, the Lord as the good shepherd, and the Lord as the chief shepherd. The distinctiveness in the opening words of this psalm lies in the use of the pronoun my. Uh, David declares the Lord is my shepherd. The, the shepherd theme is, is, is established 
in this passage as a consequence of the fact that the Lord is David's shepherd. The psalmist declares, I shall not want. In, in moments of brokenness, in moments of pain, in moments of hurt, it is good to know uh, that we, we have a God who can declare to us that even when we are going through our most challenging moments, we will have no want. He continues, so long as the Lord is my shepherd, David is saying, I will suffer no lack, no lack of support, no lack of encouragement. As I said earlier, the Lord, uh, the songwriter says, uh, he declares that, that in moments and in times like these, we can find uh, 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 salvation, we can find happiness, we can find uh, contentment in our Savior. In general terms, the words reflect simply the shepherd's provision. But more than that, they recall God's provision for his people during their travels after the exodus. Uh, the next few verses extend the imagery of the shepherd even further, illustrating the nature of the shepherd's guidance and his provision, namely that the psalmist speaks of the Lord's guidance through the vicissitudes, through the challenges of life, through the eternal bliss, where, where God is able now to move our minds from our deep and dark sadness to moments of happiness that we can find in God himself. What I want you to understand, church, and to the family today, is that the Lord is still our shepherd today. And you understand a shepherd, as he cares for his flock, there is nothing that the shepherd would not do to ensure that the flock is safe. Uh, many, many, many persons here in Antigua have, have looked after sheep and goats. And I often recall, I've never done it myself, but I recall as I see individuals walking in the mornings to take care of their animals, they would uh, make sure that they are walking on the straight path. They would make sure that they are well taken care of. They would make sure that they are fed. And in times of drought, as we have now, we would recognize that these individuals, as they care for their animals, would often go and take grass and cut it for them or whatever it is that they need to provide for their animals to ensure that they are well taken care of. The truth is, my technicians are trying to get a hold of me. All right, we can turn to the screen. <laughs> All right, seems like we've gotten it solved, so we'll turn back to the Oh, my God. 
Challenges with the with the feed. Thank you. So we are going to continue. I will uh, just do a brief recap and then continue through with the message to the end. Thank you so much for your understanding at this time. We understand the benefits of the technology. Sometimes it works with us. Sometimes not so much. And uh, we just want to be able to enjoy this moment as best as we can. As I shared earlier, the Psalmist David, in this very comforting Psalm, establishes the fact that the Lord is our shepherd. And in difficult moments, in times of challenge, we recognize God's hand of mercy in our lives. I don't know if there are any witnesses in the house who can declare that God has been your shepherd. If you can, you can just wave your hand with me. As you would have seen God's amazing hand move in your own lives. We extend the imagery a little further. As we consider God as shepherd and the, the psalmist is, as it were, a sheep belonging to the flock of God. The fundamental points expressed in this imagery are the interrelated dimensions of God's protection and also God's provision. God's protection and also God's provision. Yet the imagery uh, in the psalm is pregnant with meaning. It is, it is not merely a picture drawn randomly from nature to illustrate the character of the relationship between God and the psalmist. It is an image drawing on the ancient resources of the Hebrew tradition. Thus the psalmist in this passage is utilizing this imagery, is linking his thought to a broader concept, namely that of God who had been experienced as a shepherd by many persons over many generations. And the imagery itself is loaded in another sense uh, uh, with, with terminology and as a metaphor as it associates itself with the exodus from Egypt and the Hebrews as they travel through the wilderness understanding that while the Hebrews traveled on their journey through the wilderness God took care of them the point that we want to make here this afternoon is that even though you travel through the wilderness of life even though you go through the valleys and the difficulties and the challenges of your own experiences even though you will experience losses uh, like we are here experiencing 
blessing today, understand that God is still taking care of you. Thus, in a very subtle fashion, the psalmist is expressing confidence and trust in such a manner that his sentiments are linked to the great acts of divine salvation of the past, which in turn form the basis of our covenant faith. Yes, my friends, today we can trust in God as our shepherd because he is a God of experience. The truth is that there are lots of people all over the world who promise that they can do so many things for us. They tell us that they can take care of our financial needs and they can take care of our physical needs, but oftentimes we recognize that human beings will fail us. But the truth, as the songwriter declares, is that Jesus never fails. Do I have a witness out here, somebody? Jesus never fails in our difficult moments when we are sad when we are broken when we are lonely when we are overwhelmed we can trust in Jesus because he is still the great shepherd the ability of God to perform what he has promised provides the circumstances giving rise to a profound expression of confidence in God thus we can declare with profound confidence and I like the way that today's English version puts this passage it says the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need he lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water he gives me new strength he guides me in the right path as he has promised even if I go through the deepest darkness I will not be afraid Lord for you are with me the King James Version ends by saying, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The reason for such confidence is found in God's protection, described in the imagery of the shepherd's rod and staff. Uh, 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 the, the, the power Bible has illuminated the poetry from a modern context. The Palestinian shepherd would usually carry two implements, a club or a rod to fend off wild beasts, and a crook or a staff to guide and to control the sheep. What's so beautiful about this church is that even as we walk through our own lives, we recognize that we serve a God who keeps away the evil beasts from us. And then when we slip out of line, we serve a God who gently pulls us back into line. Isn't that a wonderful God, church? We serve a wonderful God who takes care of us in our most challenging moments. And as we come to the end of this psalm, verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here, David anticipates God's future blessings. Although the focus of the psalmist now shifts and forms a transition from the imagery of the shepherd to that of the present and the future, and also places it in banquet scenes, there are many allusions in the language of the poetry to his enemies. It is safe to assume that the psalmist had endured affliction as we endure affliction in our daily lives. He would have endured affliction in the past and at the hands of the enemies. He would have been through difficult moments. But now he anticipates that God is going to bring him through. One of the amazing things about the God that we serve is that even though we will go through difficult times, the truth is that God will always bring us through victorious. The truth is that we can rely on God. God. We can rely on him when we are hurting and when we are in pain. Uh, church, I want you to understand that, yes, David had enemies and, and we have the enemy of death here in this life, but we must understand today that even Jesus conquered the enemy of death. And one of these days, soon and very soon, death will be conquered forever. The songwriter says, be not dismayed, whate'er be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you the final verse says no matter what may be the test God will take care of you lean weary one upon his breast God will take care of you the chorus the refrain sings out beautifully God will take care of you through every day all the way he will take care of you God will take care of you I have just come by here to let you know today church that we have a God who promises to take care of us. Amen, everybody. We serve a Savior who has promised 
that he has gone to prepare a place for us and he is coming back to take us with him. Church, yes, we will go through life's vicissitudes. Yes, we will go through hardship and we will go through pain. Yes, we will lose loved ones here on earth. Yes, there is a day coming when we will have to face our own mortality. But we know, we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the God that we serve will come again and will take us to be at home with him. Today, church, you may go through hardships. You may go through difficulties, you may go through pain, but in your moments of sadness, remember David's Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, yea, though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God will be with you. God will be with you. Today, as we share with the family, I pray that our prayers will support them through their challenging moments and ultimately we too would determine by the grace of God to make our own calling and election sure. As we come to a close, I'll just encourage us to join together in the singing of that hymn number 633, When We All Get to Heaven. We're going to sing it together and then I will share the benediction with us and we'll bring the service to a close. Number 633, I think a musician may have slipped out. Sister Colette, Martin, before we sing this song, we're going to invite you to share a brief tribute with us, and then we'll sing that closing song. This expression is from me and my entire family. Claudette was more than a co-worker. We were friends. And first, I must say, we all need to tell our friends and loved ones daily how much we have, we love, and appreciate them. Claudette was my counselor, my confidant, chaffle, chef, oh, how she could cook, my seamstress, and don't talk about decorator. Claudette had advice about everything and was misunderstood at times but sometimes I could be very headstrong and I can attribute most of my achievements for myself and my family because of her advice. And most of the time, I am too proud to tell her. And that's why we must give jacket jacket according to all people and not at their Thanksgiving service. Claudette was always willing to assist. No matter how you tell her, it's okay. She will go above and beyond the call of duty to make sure you are assisted. Claudette and I have a lot of memories together. We never always see eye to eye, but they are memorable moments that I will cherish every day. Claudette, I know you're smiling. Thank you, Diana, Alvin Jr., Claudia, your mommy loved you very much, and I loved her. Sometimes I tell her I don't love her, but it's for her own good. I must confess, I know she's smiling, and I hope they will continue to find comfort in the Lord. On behalf of Eversley, Cherise, Mali, Melissa, Marlon, Jaheem, Innocentia, Philippe, and myself, we say thank you, and we love you. Sleep on Claudette. God love you best. I love you always. Amen. Thank you so much, Claudette, for that beautiful tribute. Let's all stand together, everybody, as we sing the song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Join with me as we sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all, when we all, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be.
when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim's pathway, while we walk the clouds will overspread the sky. Overspread the but when traveling days are over. Not a shadow, not a sigh. A shadow, not a sigh. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful. Let us then be true. Trusting, serving every day. Yeah, just one glimpse of him in glory. Will the toils of life repay? Will the toils of life repay? Oh, when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Onward to the prize, be soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Bow your heads as we pray. Father, God, we are grateful that you've been here with us today. We're grateful, Lord, for the many years that you shared, Sister Claudette, with us, for the lives that she has touched, for the fact that she was a part of this family here at the St. John's Church, and she indeed touched the lives of so many people with all of her giftedness, with her love, with her skills, Lord. We are thankful for what you did for her. We thank you, God, that she knew you as her personal Savior from sin, and Lord, that she would have made her calling and election sure. As we celebrate her life and as we recognize your goodness to us as you are the good shepherd, you're the one who comforts us and guides us and gives us victory along the journey of life. Today, we commit and place our lives into your hands, Father, asking you to do exceedingly abundantly beyond and above what we can think or ask or even desire. Be with every family member, Lord. Be with every individual who has been affected by this loss. And Lord, may it be our determination by your grace uh, to draw close to you so that we too can have a place in your eternal kingdom. Bless us to this end. And Lord, may you empower us to live for you day by day is our prayer today. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen amen god bless you i'm not sure if uh the rest of the service in texas may have better audio but if you want to sit and listen you're free to do so that will not let you go. And turn to God and turn to you say, Oh Lord, that will not let me go. When we hear a door and reject it, we can cry out, Oh Lord, that will not let me go. I rest my very soul in me. I give you back the life I am.